Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Bish's RV down here at the Ember RV production facility in Bristol, Indiana today. Uh, I'm going to be walking you through the production line here, showing you this thing, how they come through from raw chassis to final finished product. All the differences, the little nuances that separate Ember from brand X, Y, or Z. They all have some good qualities. So what does this brand have to offer? Is it something, you know, before you spend a lot of money? Maybe there's something here you want to find out. Is this the right product for you? In the meantime, however, I I have to find where I left my safety glasses. Uh, well, I, I can't find them. Thankfully, I never leave home without a backup pair. Let me slide them on real quick. There we go. Safety glasses. We all know a guy with a pair of these, right? So down there, that's where we were, and it's where we're going to end up, but it's certainly not where we're going to begin. Uh, kind of like Do Re Mi, I want to start at the very beginning because that's a very good place to start, and that's actually uh, over here and around the bend. Now you may notice it's rather empty in here. They were kind enough to leave the lights on for me to get this footage. So uh, if you appreciate how we took the time to come down here today, and if you appreciate how Ember let us into the facilities, hit the little like button on our video, leave a little comment that says, you know, thanks Ember, thanks Bishes, thanks whoever. And, um, you know, if, if you want to see more factory tours like this, I'll leave you a link in the video description for more tours. But um, in the meantime, I want to do just a quick note. Why are there no people here? Well, first of all, I have to come kind of do these tours. I like to do them when they're uh, not actively occupied for a few reasons. One, it's safer for me and the employees if I'm not in their way because they're not used to my bumbling idiot self getting in the way. Secondly, it's quiet now, and when those tools are running, it gets loud in here very quickly. What I did do, with the workers' permission and authorization in every instance, um, a lot of workers don't want themselves recorded on camera. Some of them uh, consented to that, and I got some extra early action footage that I recorded earlier today, so you can see some of the things in motion that normally I just have to talk about and do little hand gestures for. But in the meantime, let's go all the way down there. So we have a lot to cover today, but at the end of the day, it all starts right here with what they call their Trailblazer chassis. Um, it's not the same I-beam frame that everybody uses, nor can it be actually due to their suspension. More on that as we go. Um, if you look at this, you see it's not an I-beam. It's actually a full tubular steel structure with a lot of outriggers for, all things considered, a relatively short trailer. What this is doing is it has a greater level of structural integrity with a thicker, uh, you know, variety of steel to give you uh, a greater base to build this product on. Now this chassis is, like I said, not the same I-beam frame that everybody else makes. It comes out of the same plant that builds Airstream's chassis. And you're going to see some similarities between those two brands go as we, uh, as we go through here. Um, also of note is that, uh, you know, 300 pound rated rear accessory hitch right there that a lot of smaller RVs don't have because they don't have the structural integrity to do it. To, to have that, all of that weight dead on the back of the RV like that, it has to be built thicker, heavier, stronger. Now from there, slides over, and while it's on these handy little roller skates basically, the 100% woodless composite floor uh, goes on top of the chassis there. But that's the, take a look at this. There's not a splinter of wood in an ember structure. That is Asdell top and bottom layer. Now we're looking at two floors in case you're curious. But that black stuff, that is a pure composite material that weighs uh, less than and has twice the strength effectively in screw retention of like plywood. Um, it's, it's fantastic material. Now, uh, a, most of the little route outs in the floor are actually, they come from a supplier done like that. There's only a few little spots like here where it's pre-cut so that they just drop that out. And then that drops down and becomes the base floor in what they call the bathtub, where on many models you have a Murphy sofa. That's where um, things like your furnace water heater combo will be located. That's where some things like some batteries and things can be located with Max Solar. Um, and I, I'll be very impressed. I'm gonna wait a few seconds and I'll give you the answer. Can you tell me by looking this, pause the video and tell me what floor plan is this? Go. The answer, that is a 191 MDB. I can tell because it's got the front bathtub and then this back here is a bathroom kind of shoved off to the corner, which means this is bunk space over here. And you know, the slide out would be located in that area. That's why there's no holes in the floor over there because there's no plumbing. So. 
I don't know if that's good or bad that with, you know, after a long enough time of doing this, I can identify a floor plan simply by the cutouts in the floor, but hey, here you go. <clears throat> now, I kind of glossed over. The floor is attached to the chassis. How is that done? Uh, where all these outriggers come out, you see how it's actually lag bolted down through right there. And looking at this, there's something I've seen uh, from some other manufacturers that I think Ember might be susceptible to here that I'm going to recommend they uh, update and change. And that is basically double lock nutting this stuff just to make sure when you're going down the road, it doesn't uh, vibrate and rattle loose and you know cause the floor to come potentially detached from the base chassis. I haven't heard of an Ember doing that. I'd like to keep it that way. Now, this is one of the things I'm really excited to show you. In some of my other factory tours, I've talked about how they have a machine where they flip the floors. But all I could ever do is like do something like this and show you one flipped and one not flipped. Well, again, the staff here, they were kind enough to allow me their consent to record them doing a little bit of their work. It's very cool seeing how it, it all happens. It's all, you know, all, all machine based, basically. No one has to really manually handhold any of this stuff so they can stand back, they can stand away, they can stay safe in case something goes wonky but they flip the thing upside down. And then what they do is they start running the wiring. Now the, the underbelly paneling here, the enclosure, which first of all, awesome, the fact that they have an enclosed underbelly that a lot of smaller RVs do not have, but this is where they're going to start running all the plumbing, all the wiring. And I like that it's not this ugly rat's nest of cables. Yes, there's a lot of copper. There's a lot of wire snaking its way down through here, uh, but it, it's all organized. It's all very clean. And something I really like that they do they do a lot of, oh, I saw something neat. I want to go show you. They do a lot of um, making their own in-house wiring harnesses. Now, not a, they're not the only manufacturer that does that, but it makes it easier to identify and locate if there is an electrical fault where it's at. This, like we talk like, man, does it have holding tank heaters? Did you know that's all a tank heater pad is? But these are thermostatic, which basically means as Ron Popeil would say, set it and forget it. Um, by the way, just order the shoes under for $9.95 plus shipping and processing. Because there's a difference between free and absolutely free, right? Anyway, that's what I learned from infomercials. What this does, squirrel, sorry. Um, you could leave these on all the time. If it's above 40 degrees, they don't even turn on. But if it drops below 40 in the underbelly cavity, um, they will uh, activate to help make sure that this tank doesn't freeze up. And embers have gone to the Truma testing chambers. They're gold rated with Truma, which means uh, zero to 100 degree, hot, cold camp, tested and proven. You wanna know a funny thing at the time of this filming? For about the last two or three years, Truma is the only facility that's been open for temperature testing. It's funny though, because in that period, a lot of brands who don't use Truma products have been saying, oh, we had our products tested, they, they, they passed. But if you don't use Truma products, which most RVs do, they won't let you use their testing facility. So Ember actually has done the job. There's a lot of claims out there that might be baseless. I know for a fact they've done the work and they've done it the right way. Now, while it's flipped upside down like this, uh, sort of similar to the chassis uh, flipperator, that independent suspension system that is then lifted and hoisted over into place so that it can get secured uh, you know, where, where it belongs. Once that's all done, the whole thing has to flip back over again. And once again, the workers were kind enough to allow me to uh, you know, record them doing that, which I really appreciate. Now, uh, from there, once it gets flipped back over, the, uh, the floor skin has to go on the RV. That's actually done where I'm standing uh, right here at this location, this station as it were. Oh, that's a big time question. A lot of people ask me, how long does it take to build one of these from start to finish? And believe it or not, I finally remembered to ask the question of the people that work here. I always forget that stuff before. Now I know for a fact there are some brands who uh, like they have, um, you know, 26 stations or something like that. And they produce about 32 RVs a day, meaning there are multiple RVs that are, don't even exist that morning that start as a raw chassis that end a completed product out the door. Now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that if you have the right people doing the right thing. Ember here has about 25 stations. They complete eight RVs per business day. Do the math. That means that every RV spends about slightly over three days in here being done. They, this, it, 
This isn't the plant. People aren't running. They're not sprinting. It doesn't sound like like, you know, like some crazy timers about to go off. They make sure it's done right before it moves down to the next station. Now, once the floor has been Leonard Skinnered, uh, you start to see some of that pre-wiring I was talking about start to poke its head up here. Uh, what I like to see though, is in the middle of the RV, a big high traffic area where workers are trucking around all day. One of the first things they do in this is in any high traffic area, they lay down a little protective covering here. So, you know, if the workers end up, they don't realize there's like a screw wedge sideways in the, the tread of their soles. They're not walking through digging up your lino in your RV, you know? But even at this stage, you see how they're already starting to, to trim things out, to protect things, to, to go that extra little mile. Now, these funny big black snake hoses that are sticking out right here, those are actually your heating runs uh, that come off of the Truma Combi, uh, you know, water heater and uh, furnace combo. And it's very interesting. This is very similar to a lot of RV production. Like when you see a house getting built, you see the sticks go up, then you see the OSB go up, and then you start to see the plumber and the electrician and all that stuff. Um, with an RV, the cabinetry is largely built on the body of it first, and then the walls come up around it. it, it they're almost built inside out. But I'm really glad I did this because they have something here I didn't even realize they were doing where you see a lot of that wood paneling. I discovered it's not wood. And I knew the body of the RV um, the shell structure was all composite. I didn't know interior wall partitions like this are almost all also Asdell in these, which I think is extremely cool. There are still a couple little wood panels through the RV. There's some wood fascia on some uh, cabinetry, but there's very little in this RV that let's just say, God forbid, catastrophe happens and there's a wicked rainstorm and there's nothing even wrong with the RV. Somebody left a window or a door open or I don't know, anything happened. There's very little in this RV that can actually be water damaged and rot, mold, or mildew. And where you do see wood, you see a, a, a prime product. You don't see a secondary like compressed particle board or chipboard or anything. And you can see a couple good examples of that. Like your shower base under here is all like plywood and, and like wood studs. And they make sure that they add some extra legs on that so that you have more even consistent uh, you know, structure below your feet won't have a soft spot, you know, or anything like that. But once again, even where you're not looking, even when everything is all covered up, they're still using like three eighths plywood here. Um, this is uh, this is the 191 again. So that's our camp kitchen. That's a bunk above that. They're making sure that everything is a prime grade material, like our Goodyear Endurance Wranglers down here. So these are 87 mile an hour rated, American sourced, uh, right here, American made. And uh, Ember actually includes standard from the factory tire pressure monitoring with these. So you've got a best in class suspension, you've got some best in class tires, peace of mind, and there's other things they're doing for towing safety. But this right here, I think is very cool. Basically, you know, with a single axle RV, it's very difficult to provide um, stability once you reach your campsite. There are now more things than ever Ember is doing to help you accomplish that. So first of all, this is a kind of a, I don't know if it's custom or what. I, I've never seen anyone else do this. They basically have a built-in wheel chuck on this thing. You know, they have a, a wheel chuck right integrated onto the chassis that locks right over onto the tire to keep this thing from wiggle jiggling all over your campsite. And um, there's, you know, a handy little kind of, you know, pin system so that it stays in place. But you could also use this for security. Like if your RV is parked on like a funny angle, you wanna make sure it doesn't roll away. When it's in storage, you could lock it in place and put like a padlock on it for security so somebody can't haul your trailer away. And um, if you remember back from our very early Ember prototype videos, they are finally getting these just incredibly awesome stabilizing jacks over here. And this is what they always wanted, but the supplier wasn't able to keep them fed basically for the long time. What it is, is uh, these stabilizers drop down and then there's that, uh, there's a second leg, that vertical leg that is adjustable. So you can have it at different angles and, and you know, different uh, angles of attack effectively, depending on the incline or uh, decline as it were of a campsite. Cause this is an RV that if you want to do some off grid, off pavement, overlanding or whatever, May, you're not always going to be in a concrete pad with one of these. Now, something I asked about, I was like, what is this little red wedge lit? What is that thing? And it's a guide. 
if this leg is like touching that little red wedge and ramp, it means it's not doing its job and it's not providing stability. This is one of those things, I don't know if you've seen me do a video on Salem and Wildwoods with their strong arm stabilizer jacks. It's very, very similar to that right there where it will lock this thing down and even on a single axle, with all the things you can do to stabilize it, it will feel like it's on a concrete pad so you don't get seasick in it when people try to walk around the camper. Now, a couple other cool factors on these uh, quick drop jacks right here. Uh, first of all, really good ground clearance. Now, I understand the RV is basically on the roller skates right now, so we're seeing like plus four inches of cheater kind of height right here. But the fact is you're not like, they're, they're up tucked in like almost completely behind the tongue. You're not going to rip them off if you're on some uneven, if you're on terrain that bad, you probably shouldn't be there. The other thing is these are, this is something a lot of people don't realize. These are actually um, okayed by the manufacturer where if you want to use like a little, you know, power drill to put the jacks up and down like NASCAR pit crew driver. Well, it's okay to do that. A lot of people don't realize scissor jacks, they tell you not to do that. Now, next you notice uh, the walls go up and suddenly, baby, we're in business and she looks like a camper. A lot of things look very differently here. Um, what you won't see a lot of is a bunch of individual loose wires in the RV. Remember how I said they pre-harness everything together? Uh, basically, like you've got all that wiring in the floor it will connect to the converter and then they have like one, all the different switches, all the different lights connect through that harness to the uh, converter panel. And pardon me as I duck under the scaffolding and don't knock myself cold out here. Um, but uh, what that is going to do is create fewer failure points for electrical faults and God forbid there is a problem or a fault somewhere. Uh, it's easier to track down. And hey, wouldn't you know it, Mr. Chris Barth, product developer, one of the founders of Ember, just happened to be within earshot and walked just, over with this. You, I just heard you talking about harnesses. I was just, uh, you know, getting the harness tougher or something. <laughs> <laughs> and we've talked about some really cool stuff so far. I think some things that really separate Ember, but the, the whole construction of the body is just very irregular in the RV industry. And you see a lot of that right here. And I had a couple questions about it. And I'm, that's why I, I like to come down to these. And I said, uh, okay, so that's a laminated chunk. That's a laminated chunk. But you have this big air gap in here. And what I found is what they actually do is anywhere that it's not just perfectly straight, smooth flush, they will actually uh, spray it in with that sort of, uh, you know, expanding, uh, you know, foam stuff to prevent air gaps, you know, to prevent breezes from getting through there. Then what they do is they actually go through and basically razor blade it and they trim it off uh, so that's nice and flush and flat. And then this is where you start to see every corner of this RV, this is a turnabond tape. And I, there's a reason it's called a turnabond. Once that stuff goes on, it don't wanna come off. It says tell death do us part and it means it, darn it. Um, what this is actually doing is, this is like uh, an additional seal point that a lot of RVs do technically have most RVs use um, butyl tape and there's nothing wrong with it but the thing with butyl tape is it rots out and it decays itself organically over time it dries out this stuff doesn't really do that um, so you know with butyl tape you have to have an exterior seal point otherwise in time you're just guaranteed you will have a leak at a seam at some point with a turnabond stuff you don't necessarily have to deal with that but there are areas that we'll see like up on the roof where it, it, it is an area where they do expect potentially high volumes of water, like, you know, a rainy day, they will still go through and add an additional exterior perimeter seal just to provide every maximum level of protection they possibly can. Now from here, we got the walls up, time to get the roof put on. And again, the uh, folks who work here, they're very proud of what they do. They were kind enough to uh, allow me to get in here and take a look at this so that you could see just a quick little snippet of how that kind of goes in place. Now, there's an interesting thing here with Ember. Um, there's a lot of brands where they have um, an aluminum skeleton where it's screwed together. They will stuff the, uh, the aluminum tube with a, a, a lightweight wood to give screws something to bite into. That's because they're using a thinner aluminum structure. Embers are not ultralights. And actually, if you look at their weights very often, they're, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're heavy halses, really. And um, it, it's because all of the aluminum they're using in their structure is a, 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 a greater thickness. You know, it's just bigger, it's heavier, it's thicker. So screws actually holding the walls, you know, to the roof together actually have something better to bite into. Now, what's interesting 
is sort of in the way that there's one consolidated wiring harness, uh, you know, for the body. The roof is kind of done the same way so that one bundle of wires for everything in the roof comes down and terminates into one point to connect to the body. Once again, making it far, far easier to wire it properly and track down a problem if there ever happens to be one. But you might have noticed, again, the roof is basically just a wall. The roof is the same as everything else. And I'm going to uh, zoom you in here a little bit. So hopefully, you know, it doesn't make you like motion sick or anything. But you can see that thick cross section right there. Again, all Asdell, all uh, laminated block foam. So there's not a splinter of anything in that roof that could rot. God forbid there ever was any sort of, you know, water failure. That also means there's, I, I will never call any RV no maintenance. If anyone ever says the phrase no maintenance with an RV, get away from them. That is a snake oil salesman. This is a much lower maintenance camper compared to a lot of other things. So with very little here, you can really start to see, you know, different things coming to shape with the different floor plans. But um, I was just handed a piece of information that I was really excited to see. Um, it used to be, uh, until very recently, with an Ember, if you didn't order it with the max solar package that we're looking at right here, then basically it pretty much wasn't going to be capable of it. They are now pre-wiring all of their RVs capable of accepting the max solar package with max solar prep so that coming down the line, it's the same wiring. They have the same people doing the same consistent job every day to improve uh, you know, with a more consistent product and output. And I do believe that means that we could do some aftermarket upfits for you from standard solar to max solar and embers now that literally was not really normally possible before without kind of basically hacking at the wiring system on your RV, which I wasn't comfortable with. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've been called a hack before, but uh, not when it comes to wires. So from wiring, we start to see things like baggage doors coming into play and we start to see the exoskeleton, uh, you know, the, the the total seam covering of the RV put in place, both down here at ground level as well as up on the roof. Now, the exoskeleton material here, a lot of people don't realize, like we're so used, we see metal in the RV industry, we think steel. Unless it's shiny, then we think aluminum. That is a powder-coated aluminum. Uh, there's, again, it can go through some pretty crazy uh, weather uh, long-term before it starts to have any kind of issues. Now, I also got you uh, extra little bonus footage clips here up on the uh, that, that scaffolding where they were doing some things like uh, applying some of that uh, exoskeleton as well as doing things like that's where the solar panel uh, uh, type stuff kind of goes into place. Now, it was very interesting to me earlier. Um, the roof panel was basically just laying, uh, you know, in its place before it had to uh, get installed on the RV. And one of the workers walked across it. And one of our uh, employees who came down with me kind of like, I don't like that. They're just stomping on that right there. I'm like, it's a walkable roof. He goes, oh, I, I never thought about that. And it was just kind of funny how when it's installed up in the air where there's nothing below it, it seemed okay. But when it was sitting on a flat surface and it was fully supported, it looked wrong. But it's a walkable roof. That's exactly what it's made to do. Now, at this point... <laughs> Um, guess what comes in over here? Well, this probably doesn't require a lot of guessing. This is the slide space right here. Now, um, this is another really cool area. I'm glad I got to show you this stuff without the skin because anything basically that's like structural and load bearing, Rockwood does a very similar process. They will uh, weld an, uh, a cage and aluminum frame stuff out like this. So that's actually what's happening back here. There's uh, a little kind of mini almost seat shop where they're building some of that stuff. Um, additionally, the slide floor is exactly like the main floor. It's not, it, it's half the thickness, but it's the exact same composite material. Now you might notice how it jumps up wonky over there. That is because on this floor plan, that dinette slide goes out right over the wheel well. So you see that funky little zigzag right there. Well, that matches up with the zigzag under the dinette. It's just hidden nicely when the, uh, you know, slide is actually installed. Now from here, what's going on? is they're starting to uh, install appliances, stovetops, microwaves, that sort of thing. You see the docking center uh, getting put into place here. 
um, and you see all the seals in place in the drip rail so they can put the uh, slide in the wall. With that done, they work to kind of basically finish the exterior holes of the RV. Things like the, uh, um, the, the Stargazer skylight start to go into place. It looks like that hasn't been completed yet. Um, also, the windows start going into place, and I need to make a specific mention on these windows right here because this is actually not the normal window Ember would be using. So what we're looking at here are frameless windows. Normally, Embers have those uh, dual pane European style windows that tilt open and have a screen integrated into them, both a day and a night shade. Um, due to some supply constraints at the time of this filming, they have been forced to temporarily adopt frameless windows. But what's cool is what they are outfitting you with are still the, the dual pane uh, frameless windows. Now notice I didn't call them thermal pane windows because they're not. When you hear thermal pane, that implies a hollow gas charge pocket with a pane of glass on either side. Dual pane RV windows are basically, it's like a micro laminated, two sheets of glass are essentially like bonded together. Um, so it is, uh, you know, the, a little bit thicker in that regard. It doesn't really change any sort of um, R values to any significant degree. It turns a window from like an R 0.7 to an R like 1.1 or something like that. What these are really nice for, just like those Euro windows, is they are very good at sound dampening. And when you get inside one of these RVs and you shut the doors and the windows and everything, it is, it is surprisingly peaceful and quiet. And it is a very nice way to just get to disconnect and sort of personal zen, do a little self-care moment, you know, a little R&R. &R. Now we're actually getting to see a little bit of a, I don't know, costume change. We're going from the 191 MDB double-double bunkhouse to it looks like the 170, I'm going to guess, MRB, rear bath, no slide couples model over here, but the process stays the same. This is the point where a lot of um, interior finishes, they're starting to um, install some various things, start coming uh, into play here. Um, like right now we're seeing, you know, more appliances go in. There's some some final wiring being done. And, and again, this time of day, they've mostly shut a lot of the lights down and we're midway through the build process here but i got you a couple little looks at some of that uh happening you know in real life then basically like through this whole area there's several uh pdi stations where they're going through they're checking uh you know exterior fit finish interior fit finish they're doing some marking they're fixing little things if they can on the spot notating if something more significant needs to go down uh to like what they kind of call a lot of rv manufacturers have this area they call the sick bay stuff that needs a little bit more uh specific attention oh we saw the max solar package earlier this is the standard solar you can tell because it has just the single charge controller versus like the inverter and power management monitor system and all that kind of stuff right there so how does that camper get all the way down there from all the way over here? Well, remember when I said this thing was on roller skates? It's actually, it's really kind of wild watching these work. Workers literally just hand push these down the line. And that's one of the things that I don't think people realize, like, um, you know, the, the tra these travel trailers, they can weigh thousands of pounds. But a lot of RVs, if they have like a wheel on the tongue jack or something like that, a couple people can hand maneuver these things very handy if you have to park them in close quarters in like a barn or a garage maybe you live in an area where you know the HOA doesn't allow you to have things out in the open you know well that's where you can do it thankfully they have those nice little blue ramp wheel stops they slide behind them so they uh, don't accidentally start rolling the wrong way in case you know somebody hops into it and during active business hours I saw something I was like oh neat night I just literally couldn't get the camera out of my uh or fired up quickly enough um in this big open station where those like blue wedgelets were, you know, those ramps, what's happening right there is they're like installing the bigger furniture like that sofa because they're using a bigger, wider door on these, very similar to like Rockwood and Flagstaff. They actually install their furniture almost last. A lot of RV manufacturers, some, plenty, plenty of RV manufacturers at least, they basically build the furniture in the body of the RV, then wrap the walls around it. In the same way that you saw that toilet placed and then the walls came around it, a lot of furniture is done that way because it does not easily come through the door. Um, an RV with a bigger door like this, if you ever wanted to exchange stuff, or even if you're not talking about exchanging furniture, what if you've been out, you got a big platter full of meat, your eggs or sausage and biscuits and gravy, I don't care, whatever it was, all cooked up, and you want to take it inside the camper, or you got that stuff prepped, you want to take it outside on a flat tray. Uh, a wider door makes that a lot easier instead of trying to tip the tray just enough to get through the door because inevitably 
You're gonna end up looking like me at a restaurant. You're gonna have mess on your belly. Now, it, what I actually like about this is like the last three or four stations we've looked at have all been PDI stations. They're doing active quality checks. Now they might be doing things like installing a sofa there, but they have like multiple end PDI uh, pre-delivery inspection spots right here. And one of the things that they do on every single unit, um, they, well, three things actually, they electrical test everything, they water test, pressurize test everything, and that even includes, they basically have this big machine where they stick an insert in the door and they pump air into the RV to pressurize it uh, to, to make sure they don't have a void in a seal, which is a very flowery way, uh, flowery way of saying leak. Uh, now, from there, what happens over here, I think, is very interesting. Again, th these are all PDI stops. There's specific employees. Each is trained to check certain things uh, a specific way every single time. Um, and again, during business hours, I had an opportunity to take a look at that. One of those, uh, basically, they were checking even the exterior turn signal safety marker lighting. Uh, you know, they could be back there watching it click, 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 blink up while, uh, you know, they, they could be having the unit powered up front and be behind the unit checking all those lights to make sure that it is, you know, providing maximum road safety for you, both, you know, front, back, sides, every which way. Also, they are um, filling and uh, checking the water systems on every single RV. They're not exclusive in the industry to do that. There's many manufacturers that do. There's also many manufacturers that will roughly pull like every one out of five or six units. Ember's doing it every single time. And remember, by the time the RV got to this point, it's already three days old. It's already spent three days in here. And I don't know if you've noticed, in the background, you're seeing all these big shelves full of all these big appliances and all this stuff, right? Ember stores and warehouses all of their stuff uh, inside. They do that so that it is protected. It's away from the weather. Um, it has a far greater level of climate control. This isn't like a, a guaranteed like humidity controlled building, but it doesn't need all that. The fact is though, this stuff is all in here. It's all like the same room temperature. And where that is really important is these are built here in Midwest in Indiana in the heartland of America, the crossroads of America, right? Well, um, the, uh, uh, if the stuff is stored outside and it's cold and it's, uh, shrunken a little bit from that cold, then you install it into something that's warm and then it expands. It could pop out of square. It could pop out of tolerance when everything's the same temperature. Cause it's in the same space. It makes a difference. Also this right here, these are the scales. Every single RV they build is individually scaled and weighed. Manufacturers are not required to do that. They are actually totally within their rights to uh, build one unit, a base unit, measure its weight, and then build, uh, basically provide a calculated estimated weight, uh, assuming option X, Y, or Z, and they are legally able to put that on their weight tag. Ember goes a little bit above and beyond. And that's what they're doing on every RV, every single time. Whether it is one of the uh, larger overland models like we see over here on the right, or even one of the little fun size overland micros over there on the left. They're doing the same thing, the same way, every single time. And I have never said there's a perfect RV. I've never said any manufacturer or look at myself in the mirror, any dealer is necessarily without sin. I think we've all made mistakes, you know, that happens. What I like though, is what I've seen from Ember, their service has been Johnny on the spot. They've been very involved with their community. They've been very invested in getting community feedback. Actually, your input and your feedback has literally helped them pick and design and build new floor plans that they never even had their eyes on before. They are really, really listening to all the good things that you're saying so that they can provide the best final experience for their owners uh, you know, w within their ability. And, and I see where they're doing, they're doing things differently. And certainly embers are not always the least expensive. They're not always the lightest weight. I will leave you a link in the video description. If you would like to see the various models that we have in stock at Bish's RV and what we're asking on any of them and understand it can vary greatly 
by um, the date that the RV is uh, made, because that change, the, the invoice can change significantly. Since these came out, pricing has already gone up on them, just like every other RV out there. So initial pricing on these is no longer valid. Not to mention shipping distance affects that. And you know, things like, did you add max solar? That could quickly add up to thousands of dollars. So I'll leave you a link down there. If you're curious or you're serious, you're one click away from seeing current accurate pricing, even if this video is three years old. And that's something I wanna tell you. Since six months ago, when this company showed up on the map, basically, I already see changes, advances, progress. This is a company that is going to continue to evolve, and I think rapidly doing some fun and different things in fun and different ways. I think it's a trailer that should absolutely be longer lasting. I think it's something that would require less upkeep, more enjoyment, more opportunity, something you could potentially hand down to your kids. It's kind of my hope with my dad's ember actually <laughs> but let me know what you thought if you found this of value if you learned something if you saw something new if you have questions if i missed something if you saw a little oh josh was that a nimble was that a if you're concerned about something leave me all the comments let me know what you like what you dislike what you'd like to see also let me know who you'd like to go to next i did promise a friend who works at another brand i, I i'm definitely going to his place very next so let me know where you'd like me to go after that. <laughs> and then again, folks, I really appreciate you joining us today. If you had a good time, if you learned some things, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new with us. I've got other factory tours and we've got over 6,000 videos in my library right now for you to enjoy. When you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.